I'm here with Rob Connolly from The Curious Kumquat, the best name of a restaurant Thank ever. You. Rob, thanks for being in the studio with us this morning. So what are we making today? We're going to make cattail hummus. Cattail hummus. I'm hoping that doesn't really entail cattails. It sure does, but not, oh, does. <laughs> not, not the tails of cats, but the plants you find next to ponds and marshes. Okay, so uh, what what goes into this? What are we looking at here in terms of ingredients? Well, of course we have the cattail. But that's what this is right here? That's right. Okay. And then we have limes, miso, and then there's a lot of different things that we can put in to make it extra special, depending on what you're looking to do. And mm -hmm. I, most of my cooking is foraged food, foods that I get from the wilderness, especially the Gila no wilderness kidding. down okay. south. And so these are things I picked in the past, you know, two weeks maybe. And wow. in fact, these mushrooms I picked just yesterday. No kidding. So you're doing the hand pick. I mean, that, oh, yeah. this is farm to table at, at its core. I wash my own dishes even. Wow. Look at yeah. you. All right. Well, uh, we will be back here in just a few minutes cooking some, well, not cooking, preparing some hummus, <laughs> I should say. But for right now, let's head over to Brittany with your tip of the day. Thank you, Chad. I'm back in the kitchen with Rob Connolly from The Curious Kumquat. Okay, what are we making? A hummus? We're going to make a hummus okay. out of cattails. And like okay. I said before, not cattails <laughs> not from a actual. cat, but it's a plant that you find in ponds and marshes. Okay, and that's probably why Chad didn't know what they were because we <laughs> are from here. Except, straight from here. just driving over to the studio this morning over okay. at Tingley Beach, I saw cattails. Cattails, okay, great. But don't take those, those are on public lands. Okay, you <laughs> don't take those. Okay, so if you want to get your cattail fix, you got to go to the Curious Kumquat. Okay, so what's the first step? What do we do with these? Well, first thing is, since most people don't know how to work with a cattail, we need to learn how to clean it up and okay. make it usable. So if you can imagine the cattail, they're six or eight feet tall yeah. <clears throat> with some roots and then the brown fuzzy part on top. I cut it down close to the base. Okay. That's where the freshest, juiciest part is. Okay. And then I just start peeling away the outer parts, which are woody. It's it's not okay. edible, and you, you would know that immediately. Okay. And I know I've gone deep enough into the cattail when I can take my fingernail and work and it through this. easily. Okay. So I'm still not there on this one. I've okay. already pre-done some. These ones are done? The, those are peeled away, and then okay. I cut them into smaller pieces. So this is what they turn into? Right. Okay. Because I like to keep them easy in the food processor. Okay, great. And then you have these. And then we have soybeans. These are edamame. You get them at sushi restaurants. Okay. Um, and you can get these at any grocery store now. They're all in either the freezer section or the produce section. Okay. And all you have to do is pop it with your finger and the bean comes out. Oh and most of them have two or three beans. And you can eat these just like they are right now. Oh, okay. In a Japanese restaurant, they'd be steamed and salted and it's a nice little snack. Oh man, this is so cool. Okay, well we're gonna put it all together when we come back. But for now, we're gonna get a check on your weather today here in Albuquerque. A beautiful shot of downtown Albuquerque on this Monday morning. Hope you're off to a great start today, folks. We are because we're in the kitchen with Rob Connolly from the Curious Kumquat, mm -hmm. and we are making cattail hummus. That's right. Cattail. I'm not going to do the cattail joke and, anymore. And I oh, bet you've never had this before. I've never. I've never yeah. had it. So I'm looking at this here, and I says, oh, are those cucumbers? He says, no, this is the cattail. They look just like diced cucumbers. Yeah, and and in do. fact, at home, when we have a martini, mm -hmm. which we're known to do, sometimes mm -hmm. we'll take cattail because it's a nice stirring stick for the martini. Oh yeah. Okay, there you I go. Love it. Win win. All yeah. right, so how do we make this hummus? We've got the, the chopped up cattail in here and then the miso, is that this is, that is miso here? and you can get miso at pretty much any grocery store. If you okay. want to get specialized you can go to an Asian market. Okay. Okay. This one is a yellow miso. Mm -hmm. um, I also use white, but don't be too particular. It's just a nice mellowing flavor that goes in with the cattail. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I added about a quarter cup of water to this. Okay. Now, again, the most important thing is get fresh cattail. Make okay. sure that your thumbnail can work its way into it because that way you know it's fresh and soft. Otherwise, it's woody and not very palatable. Gotcha. Okay. okay. But yeah, you just put them in your food processor uh -huh. and 10 seconds, it should be done. Whoa. Are you guys timing at home? I don't know, I'm not even timing. I hope someone's timing. Pretty quick. There you go. Okay. And there we go. So like normally yeah. cattail has chickpeas, so it's a beige yeah. color or a tan color. But with the cattail, it's going to be green, so it's mm -hmm. a, a good summer um, yeah. snack or appetizer and serve with chips or pita bread. It seems okay. like it would be really fresh. It yeah, is. Yeah, I mean the yeah. smell here, especially yeah. after you know blending it here, the smell is very, very fresh. Yeah. So now, is this something that we can get at the Curious Kumquat? Uh, in season, you can. I use cattail year-round, but I okay. use different parts of the cattail. And you're going to see three parts right here on this dish alone. Okay. Um, the, the fresh part is 
really great, but it's to me, it's kind of like the common part. Yeah. So it's not, it's not all that difficult to use. Um, because we're a fancy restaurant, we put things in pastry bags at home. Oh, just I'm like, I'm into it. <laughs> just dump it on your plate at home. Okay. And then a little juice will come out. Uh huh. And then you, if we can, make the hole big enough. All right, there you go. There we go. <laughs> and then you just Swirl move it around it your plate. Try to make a pattern if you can. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wow, it smells so fresh. Yeah, it does. It's, it I mean, it smells really a lot good. like cucumber. I mean, is the taste yeah. a lot the like cucumber? The cucumber is very, or the flavor is very similar to cucumber. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, there's a lot of things I foraged in the past couple days, so mm -hmm. we're going to use some of them as garnish. Okay. These are currants that I got out in the Gila wilderness. Okay. Um, these are a little bit tart. Natural flavors tend to be tart. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's a sweetness to them, okay. so you shouldn't be afraid of them. All right. mm -hmm. And you know, this is a cattail, also. This is also cattail. This is cattail that I've taken all the the woody parts, yes. mm -hmm. and I burned them. I turned okay. them into an ash. This ash makes a really nice garnish, but it's not just garnish; it's a neutralizer. So okay. in this dish, there's some acid to it from the lime juice, uh -huh. and sometimes you want to tone that down and make it a little more palatable and enjoyable. Okay. But there's and so more. Is, that, is that what tones Wait, it down? there's more. This is. Okay. Um, in Europe, a lot of times with tangy cheeses, they'll put uh -huh. ash in there, vegetable ash. And it's the no same idea. thing. It, wow. it just yeah. tones down the acidity. There now, you go. This is the gold of the cattail plant. This is the pollen. It comes up for two weeks out of the year. Mm -hmm. And if the monsoons hit at that time, you don't get pollen that year. Man. Last year, I only gathered literally two tablespoons of pollen for the restaurant. This year, I got a couple quarts. Wow. So okay. timing was good this year. And this flavor is really interesting. Of course, it's beautiful. Yeah, uh -huh. it is. Um, but the, the flavor is almost like a roasted eggplant. Okay. Wow. And it's okay. got this great fragrance, but it's a, a dirty sweetness that goes with a it. A dirty sweetness. Cool. So, I like that. And yeah. then these, my favorite. Yesterday morning, I harvested puffball mushrooms. Wow, where do you get these? Where so did you harvest cool. these? From the, the, na the natural grocery store. I mean, that's what I call it. I go out in the, the woods. The natural wow. grocery store. <laughs> Except it's not shoplifting there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just found those. I went to get the cattails, and the puffballs were there. Now, puffballs can get as big as a, a football. No kidding. And okay. so we were saying they, they'd make a nice I know, pillow. They would make they're a pillow. Yeah, right. They're pillow. soft and squishy, almost like a marshmallow. Yeah. Okay. And so on these, you can just sprinkle them around, give a little more substance. Uh -huh. And then the last garnish I have is wood sorrel. Now, I, I don't know okay. if you ever ate wood sorrel as a child. Mm -mm. No? Try it. At least okay. not on purpose. Here, Chad. I don't think. All right, so we're going to try this. Wood sorrel. We're going to put the last garnish on this. We're going to take a look at the finished product Whoa. when we come back. Whoa. So stay with us, folks. We're not done yet. That is good. Wood, wood sorrel? Wood sorrel. Oh, my gosh. That's really good. Oh, my God.